Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Archbishop Midi High School Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some really great schools here with us today. My name is Brianna, and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. The, um, we hope you enjoyed the previous sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash archbishop dash midi. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Temple University Japan Campus. Thank you, Brianna. Okay, hello everyone. And oops, hang on. Of course, when I want to present, it, it does something weird on me. One moment. There we go, there's my screen. Thank you for your patience. Hello everyone, my name is Kelly New eBay. It's like the new eBay. I am from, uh, I'm originally from Hawaii, uh, but I live here in Tokyo where I work and represent Temple University Japan and campus. We are about 16 hours ahead of California. It is Friday, happy Friday from Tokyo. I can tell you the day is gonna end well, so don't worry. For those of you who don't know us, we are part of Temple University. The main campus is on the East Coast in Philadelphia, second campus in Rome, Italy, third campus is here in Tokyo. We are fully accredited by the Middle States Commission on Higher Education in the U.S. What does that mean? It means that students earn a U.S. degree. It is possible for our students to go to all three campuses or take advantage at one of our study abroad programs from around the world. And of course, it is possible for students students to come to Japan for all four years to earn their U.S. degree in Tokyo. Here are some key points on why students choose TUJ, Temple University Japan campus specifically. The first reason is the quality education we provide. Students will be challenged. I always tell them, get ready for homework. You're going to be doing a lot of reading and writing, but that's a good thing. That's what you're paying tuition for. Uh, we really want to make sure that you are trained uh, and have the skills necessary to work in any field. Classes are all in English. Another reason why students choose us is the diversity of students we have. Um, we have literally students coming from all over the world. We have Japanese students who grew up in California. I have American students who grew up in Hong Kong and attend a British school system. So it really is quite unique. Third reason why students choose us is our study options. This looks like a small list of all of our majors we offer, but it is quite one of the, it's actually one of the most comprehensive lists you'll see when you're looking at options in Japan. Uh, we are liberal arts based, so it is okay to apply as undeclared. Some of the most popular majors are international business studies, international affairs, Art, we are part of the Tyler School of Art, but the Japan campus offers a BA in art, so there is no portfolio review when you apply. Another popular major is communication studies, which includes film production and journalism. Fourth reason why students choose us is affordability. This is our tuition uh, compared to a public university and a private university on the low end. So in many ways, it is cheaper for you to go out of country than it is to go out of state. Because we are an American university, we do accept financial aid, any GI Bill benefits if I have veteran families here, and um, of course, merit-based scholarships. That means it's based on how well you're doing in school now, which I know all of you are doing well, right? Awesome. Here's a quick snap of a uh, screenshot of uh, the key links for you for financial aid. For any seniors here, FAFSA is open. This is the Temple University code you put in if you want to apply FAFSA to uh, your time here at our Japan campus. Again, here are more quick links for you. I will be going over the application checklist in this next slide. To apply, it's like applying to any U.S. university. We do take the Common App, or you can apply to us directly. As for test scores, we are test optional for any native English speakers, so you do not have to submit SAT or ACT if you don't want to. Uh, if, you, if we have any non-native English speakers here, you will have to submit an English proficiency test, um, or if you have SAT or ACT, we will take that. <laughs> 
But again, if you are a native English speaker, you do not have to submit SAT or ACT. There's a personal statement and then the application fee, transcripts as well. They can be sent electronically. Uh, so no excuses. You definitely can get this done on time. Fifth reason why students choose us is the career prep. Our career development center does an excellent job with preparing students for the real world, starting with helping with part-time job search, resume writing, interview prep, and of course, internships. We are very well known for our internship program. Uh, it's quite extensive. And how awesome is it to say you have work experience in a different country? Of course, this is all to help lead you up to full-time employment. We have students going to various fields, uh, places like Amazon, Square Enix, to name a few. And oops, of course, it wanted to go back there we go. If you want to connect with students, you can catch them on social media. It's a great way to see what life is like through students' eyes and what they are up to. We're doing a few takeovers recently, um, as well as uh, hosting events. So you definitely want to check that out. Instagram is the most active platform. And you can also catch us on the virtual road. We have sample lessons. We have webinars going on regularly. Uh, you'll get to see me talk more uh, longer than six minutes. Uh, and of course, you can always ask us questions there live. If you have any other questions, though, you can email us. Our inbox accepts emails 24-7. Uh, I may not be able to reply right away, but I definitely will when I wake up. Again, my name is Kelly Nuibe from Temple University Japan campus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly. Uh, next, we'll hear from the University of Arizona. Awesome. Thank you so much. And hello, everyone. My name is Molly Ingram, and I am Assistant Director of Admission on the West Coast for the University of Arizona. Um, I am on your time zone. I live in the Bay Area, so I am available to help you out. My contact information is here. Um, but a little bit about the University of Arizona. We are a Tier 1 public research university located in Tucson, which is about 100 miles south of Phoenix. Tucson is Arizona's second largest city and the University of Arizona is Arizona's oldest university founded before Arizona was even officially a state. This building that you see here, Old Main, this was our first and only building on campus and since then our campus has grown significantly to a beautiful one square mile campus uh, with close to 47,000 total students. We do have over 36,000 undergraduate students and that total student body is also including our law school, medical school, and grad programs, since we do have lots of different masters and PhD programs that you could pursue after getting a bachelor's degree. Now, in terms of our student body, students are coming from all 50 states, as well as 121 different countries. 48% of our students identify as being ethnically diverse, and the vast majority of our students that are coming from outside of Arizona are from California. Um, that might not be a huge surprise to you, but we did welcome about 11 1100 Californians in our first year class this year. So we are seeing more and more students from California choose the University of Arizona, and for good reason. We are a top 10 public university in the Western region. We are the only member of the Association of American Universities from the state of Arizona. And if you're not familiar with the AAU, this is an invitation only organization made up of 65 universities in North America that are at the highest level of research activity. Uh, so you UCLA, Stanford, Berkeley, they are all members of the AAU, as is the University of Arizona. Now, in terms of academics, what can the University of Arizona offer you? We do have over 300 different degree programs at the undergraduate and graduate level, and the five programs that we're most well known for are architecture, engineering, which we have 15 different kinds of, nursing, business, and our College of Fine Arts. You can also study anything at the honors level in our W.A. Frankie um, Honors College. We recently, as of uh, this past weekend, got a $25 million gift donation from the Frankie family to really focus on scholarship opportunities and study abroad emphasis for our Honors College students. 
Now, aside from having the major that you're interested in, we want to make sure that you're going to have a really great, well-rounded college experience, which is more than just academics. College is very much um, a family, and joining the Wildcat family means that you are going to have access to hundreds of clubs and organizations related to academic interests, cultural, political, pop culture, religious, you name it. Um, and we are part of the Pac-12 Conference, Division I for sports. So if you want to see the Wildcats take on or Oregon or USC, all those other Pac-12 schools, that's definitely something that we can offer you. If you're an outdoorsy student, we're not too far away from Sabino Canyon, um, as well as Saguaro National Park, where you can see the nation's largest cacti, which is very iconically Arizona. And we do have hundreds of miles of hiking and biking trails. One of my favorite things about Tucson is the fact that the University of Arizona does put on the nation's largest student-run carnival, Spring Fling, and that takes place on our campus in the springtime, as the name suggests. And we've been doing that for over 40 35 years. Another really awesome part about Tucson, not only are we one of the most inclusive cities in the nation, according to Yelp, and one of the best college towns, but we have the nation's best 23 miles of Mexican food. So if you love Mexican food like I do, definitely come visit and check out our amazing restaurants. Now let's talk about our application process. So if you are a senior and you are listening right now, you can apply to the University of Arizona tonight or tomorrow if you want to, you know, go to sleep not long after this. Our application is a rolling admissions application. So the sooner you turn in a completed application, the sooner you're going to get an admissions decision back from Arizona. We do not require any letters of recommendation unless you were applying to the Frankie Honors College, then you'll need one for that separate application. But for the main campus, no test scores, you're going to self-report your grades, you don't even need to write an essay. It is a pretty straightforward application, which you can access on um, the Common App, the Coalition, or just on our website. Um, big secret revealed, or maybe you already knew this, but just in case you didn't, we do assured admission. So if you're in the top 25% of your graduating class, or if you have an unweighted 3.0 six semester core GPA, uh, you will automatically be admitted to the university. You just need to turn that application in. You will receive an admissions decision back within two to four weeks, and you'll also see it does say merit scholarship for Californians. When you apply to the University of Arizona, you are also applying to the Arizona Tuition Award, which is our merit scholarship that ranges in value from $1,000 to $35,000 per year based on your unweighted six semester core GPA. That's not the only scholarship opportunity that we have for you, but that's the one that you will automatically apply for when you apply to Arizona. I hope to see your application soon. I'll put my contact information into the chat and I will pass it over over to the next presenter. Thank you and go Wildcats. Thank you so much, Molly. Um, next, we'll hear from Iowa State University. Hi there, everyone. Thanks for joining our session tonight. Um, I'm Dan, I'm a regional admission counselor for Iowa State University. Um, and um, yeah, thanks again for taking some time. I know there's a big baseball game going on right now in, in the Bay Area. So um, uh, taking a look a little bit about um, some information about Iowa State University, we're gonna be a larger public land grant tier one research institution. We're also an AAU a member university. The enrollment at Iowa State's about 31,000 students. Of those 31,000, about 26,000 are going to be undergraduate students. Um, we have men's and women's Division I athletics, and we're a member of the Big 12 Conference. So we'll play schools like um, uh, Kansas, um, Oklahoma, Kansas State, um, Oklahoma State, to name a few. Um, Iowa State's really known for our rigorous academic programs. We're a leader in innovation, and we've uh, been known to have one of the top 25 most beautiful campuses in the nation as well. Taking a quick look at where Iowa State is located on the map here, you're gonna find Iowa State in Ames, Iowa, right in the heart of the Midwest, right in the center of Iowa. Um, students attending Iowa State from further away usually will fly into the Des Moines Airport, which is just about 35 minute drive from campus. So very accessible airport, very accessible to get to and from uh, campus. 
Um, and as you may be able to see on the map here, we're surrounded by some major cities like Minneapolis, Chicago, Kansas City, St. Louis, to name a few. So that close proximity when students are looking for those internships and job opportunities and co-op opportunities after or during their time at Iowa State or after, um, there's that, that provides a lot of opportunities for students. And then we have a great network of alumni spread across the US and across the world, um, including over 11,000 alumni in the state of California and a great regional alumni group in the, in the Bay Area as well. There's a number of ways that students can kind of find their fit, find their community at Iowa State. Uh, we have about 900 different student clubs and organizations um, that are offered. There's opportunities to study abroad on all seven continents. We have about 90 different learning communities, which offer students an opportunity to build community, um, find their network right when they step foot on our, on our campus. Students also have the opportunity to get involved in different about 50 different intramural activities throughout the year. We have different club sports that are offered as well. And then we have a really great first year honors programs that provide opportunities for students to take unique courses, gain exposure to undergraduate research, and then connect with, with our great faculty as well. So at Iowa State, we have about six, or we not about, we have six undergraduate colleges. Um, as well as our College of Veterinary Medicine. And we offer about 100 different majors. Um, students study anything from engineering to kinesiology to architecture to business. We have a top five apparel merchandising and design program. Um, and then what, generally when I'm talking to students from the, the West Coast, I get a lot of interest in our architecture major, um, our top engineering program, specifically aerospace engineering and animal science. And then we have a we have the number one um, agricultural engineering program in the nation as well. And for students that are maybe unsure of what they wanna study at Iowa State, that's okay too. Every college offers an undecided option. And then we have an open option program within our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which allows, which um, uh, we're kind of exposes students to different areas of study um, across, across campus. Taking a look at our application process, students can apply online through our um, institutional application, or you can also find us on the Common App. We do have rolling admissions, and we're currently accepting applications um, for fall 2022. We are a self-report school, um, so you're able to self-report your academic information on that application, hopefully saving you and your counselor some time not having to send in transcripts or test scores. Um, at the time you apply for admission. How we determine admissibility for students is we have a formula called the Region Admission Index. This is gonna factor in a student's GPA, test score, and those core courses you took in high school. And um, we require a 245 RAI score or higher um, to meet our automatic admission requirements. I'll go ahead and drop our admission requirements in the chat as well, so you, if you'd wanna learn a little bit more about about that RAI, you're, you're welcome to take a look at that. We are gonna be test optional through 2022, at least at the moment. Um, so students that don't have a test score um, can don't need to report a test score. Um, in that case, we'll review a student's application on an individual basis with an emphasis on those high school core courses and that high school GPA. And then we do offer some great automatic admission scholarships, uh, merit-based scholarships for California students ranging from $7,000 up to $11,000 per year. And then we also have a bonus scholarship, our exploration award um, valued at $3,000 per year. But again, I'll go ahead and drop my information in the chat. Thanks again for um, joining us tonight. Take care. Thank you so much, Dan. And next we will hear from California Lutheran University. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, my name is Amanda. I am an admission counselor at Cal Lutheran. I'm also an alum of Cal Lutheran, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the school. So we are California Lutheran University, um, a smaller uh, private liberal arts institution located in Thousand Oaks in Southern California. Um, so we are, if you think geographically, just between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara, 
we're right in the middle. Um, so Malibu is probably our closest beach. We're about 20 minutes to the coast. Uh, our campus is very open, very green. As you can see from this area, we're in a city of thousand oaks, meaning we have a lot of oak trees. So it's a really beautiful place to be living. This is a quick snapshot of our students as a whole. So we have just under 3,000 total uh, undergraduate students with an average class size of 18 students, which is really phenomenal. So you really get to interact with your professors on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It is not uncommon for professors to give out their personal cell phone number to students uh, or to the class to be able to ask for extra help. It's not uncommon for professors to take a class out to dinner at the mall and say, let's just go celebrate what we've done this week or this year, right? Um, so having those relationships is super important for academic growth, personal growth, career growth, all of that great stuff. And you absolutely have that at Cal Lutheran. Our students come from 58 countries, 36 states, and represent 41 different faiths. So while we are California Lutheran University, Lutheran being a branch of Christianity, we're not just Lutheran. There's a lot of different faiths represented on campus. We have our Jewish club, we have Catholic mass on campus, um, along with many other religious opportunities. Um, for example, we have chapel once a week, but it's not required that students attend. So you really get to interact with your faith as much as you want to, or not at all at Cal Lutheran, it's up to you. 28% uh, of our students are first generation college students and we over half of our students are from underrepresented backgrounds. Um, these are two things that we're really grateful for to be able to serve these students um, and create a place that is welcoming for all. We are also a Hispanic serving institution. This is a federal designation. Um, we have this because we have over 35% of our student body, body identify as Hispanic or Latinx. Um, with that designation comes a lot of federal funding that we just give right back to our students. We have 41 majors at Cal Lutheran, the most popular being listed on the screen here, including biology, business, communication, exercise science, and psychology. And while these might be the most popular, it certainly doesn't mean they're going to be harder to get into or harder to get classes for. At Cal Lutheran, we have zero impacted programs, meaning you're not going to spend extra time, an extra semester, an extra year to graduate from Cal Lutheran. We actually have a four to finish guarantee. This states that Cal Lutheran guarantees you will graduate in four years. And if for some reason you're unable to get the classes you need in order to graduate in that amount of time, Cal Lutheran will pay for any additional classes you need beyond those four years. So we're really putting our money where our mouth is. We're saying we're going to get you graduated in four years. And if not, we're going to pay for it. Um, I think that if you're hoping to graduate from a school in four years, it's really important that you attend an institution that can do that for you. And that's absolutely something that we can do. We do have great programs in study abroad, in internships, as well as research for all of our majors. Being so close to Los Angeles, we do have the opportunity to have really great internships with bigger companies, with the Los Angeles Dodgers, NBC Universal, the Walt Disney Company, just to name a few, um, as well as in some of our STEM fields. We have um, the Los Robles Hospital, that's literally the five minutes from campus that we have a lot of students that get to do some rotations and shadow there um, to be able to get those experiences, as well as great study abroad programs. All of our study abroad programs will actually let you use your scholarship to pay for study abroad. So you'd just be paying the same cost to live on campus and go to school as you would be to study abroad in a whole new country. There are lots of ways that students can get involved outside of the classroom as well. Um, we have over 100 different clubs and organizations students can join and that is growing all the time. We have clubs like Adventure Club. They literally just go on adventures. They'll go hiking, they'll go to the beach. Um, we have a Pokemon club I recently just heard about. We have a happiness club. They're doing uh, an event called reverse trick-or-treating where they just go around and pass out candy to people instead of asking for it. That's kind of a fun one. Um, we also have great multicultural programs. So we have um, our Filipino club, our Latin American student organization, our black student union, um, Hawaii club. They actually put on a luau for all of our student body once a year that uh, everyone looks forward to each year for sure. Um, and one of a really fun event we have as well is called Let It Snow. It's this bottom photo here. We bring 40 tons of snow to campus, pile it up into mounds, and then go sledding down the snow. Super fun way to kick off the holiday season and lots of other events throughout the years for our students. Our residence halls are super great at Cal Lutheran. We call it living the sweet life. Um, so we have 15 co-ed residence halls. And we're actually ranked 12th best in California. And I think 
after kind of seeing them, it's pretty easy to see why. All of our residence halls have free parking. Yes, you heard it, free parking and free laundry. Students can bring their car on campus as early as their freshman year. Um, and all of them have Wi-Fi, climate controlled, which means heating and air conditioning, as well as private bathrooms and showers. So there are no communal bathrooms anywhere on ca campus at Cal Lutheran. The way most of the residence halls work is you have two bedrooms, each with two people in it. That leads out into a living room and then connected to that living room is your own bathroom. Having that living room space is super nice. Students like to bring couches and futons and mini fridges and having that space is really important, right? You're not just in this little box of a room. Um, you really have space to spread out even as early as your freshman year. That's how our freshman residence halls start out. This is a little bit about our athletic teams as well. We do have 22 NCAA Division III teams. Some of them are nationally ranked. Some have won national championships in the past few years, our baseball team and uh, women's volleyball team as well. We are located on the common application in order to apply. Uh, so that should make things a bit easier for you. We will need your official transcripts. Um, we are test optional as far as SAT or ACT scores go and that's permanently moving forward. So if you don't wanna submit scores or if you're unable to, you certainly don't have to. You can see some information there about our average admitted student profile um, is about uh, a 3.7 is the GPA that we've seen from our past um, admitted students. Our early action deadline is coming up, which is November 1st. Uh, so hopefully we can see your application by then. If not January 1st, um, we will hopefully see your application then. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to let me know and I'm happy to help. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. Next, we will be hearing from Menlo College. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Let me, can you do mind stop sharing your screen? Thanks. Okay. You get all queued up. All right, thank you so much for joining. My name is Alexa and I am here to speak to you a little bit about Menlo College. We are located in the Bay Area, right between San Jose and San Francisco. As you can see with this slide, it's one of my favorites. You can see all of the awesome places people have either interned for us or have gotten jobs at after college. So as you will see um, later on in the slide, when I list all of our academic programs, Menlo College is a business focused school with um, a psychology major that we offer as well. So if you're business minded, if you're interested in getting work experience here um, at any of these locations or many more, uh, Menlo College is definitely something to uh, keep in mind. We are a very small campus. We have about 800 to 850 students, and that breaks down to a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio, with our average class size being about 19 students. Even though we're a very small campus, we have tons of opportunities for students to get involved with different organizations here on campus. We have over 40 different student clubs here that ranges from sports clubs, um, cultural clubs, clubs focused on different academic programs, you name it. So it provides our students a lot of opportunity to find students with similar interests as them and also you know, learn about something new as well. Here's the list of our academic programs. As I mentioned earlier, all of our majors with the exception of psychology are focused in business. One of the nice things about that is if you know you want to study something in business, but you're not quite sure what, you can come in as undeclared. All of our business students take the same core classes, so it makes it very easy for students to double major if that's something you're interested in. It also makes it easy for students to change majors if they're not quite sure if they come in as you know, an entrepreneurship major, but turns out they really like doing marketing. It's very easy to switch um, during your first couple of years while you're exploring where in business you um, find your passion. Our athletics compete at the NAIA level. Um, we offer both men's and women's varsity teams listed here, as well as four different club sports. So if you're interested in competing in a club sport, it's still competitive. We still compete with other schools um, in the area against their club teams too. Um, so that's definitely an option for students along with our intramurals as well um, for students who want to, you know, stay active during their time here um, at college. If there are any students um, on this little um, webinar that are interested in competing in athletics, be sure to reach out to me. Our athletic coaches award the um, scholarships for athletics separately. So you'll have to contact your specific coach to find out about their recruitment process and what their athletic scholarships look like. And I'll be touching on scholarships in a couple slides. 
Um, here at Menlo College, if you are here to study business, you are required to complete an internship in order to graduate. Uh, sounds a little bit scary at first, but we have an internship and career services center here on campus that meets with our students and based off of their major and what they're interested in doing, you know, after graduation, we help them find the perfect internship for them based off of, you know, those interests um, that students express. We have partnerships or relationships, I should clarify and say, with um, er the areas that I listed you know, in the slide before, but we also have relationships with people um, down in Southern California, if you wanted a chance to go down there or even worldwide too about financial aid. So 90% of our students do receive financial aid. Those who are admitted are able to receive up to $20,000 in a Dean scholarship. So right off the bat, we can start talking about, you know, financial aid and how to go about paying for college here um, at a private institution. Um, our average financial aid package is $34,000. If you haven't completed your FAFSA already, that's definitely something that I highly recommend you start sooner rather than later. We are going to are awarding students um, with their financial aid award letters in December. So again, um, given that we're such a small school, we really take the time to walk our students and their families through the entire admissions process and the entire financial aid process as well. So it's never too early to start that conversation, meeting with our financial aid advisors and making sure that, you know, you get all of your questions answered. So if you want to attend um, a private school or if you are looking for how to, you know, find as many scholarships and grants as possible, you know, we try to help our students out throughout the entire process. Our admissions requirements and deadlines are listed here. I'll kind of walk you through them. So to begin with, we have our admissions application. You can apply for our school through the Common App, and we also have an Express application as well. And I can leave the link to that in the chat once I'm done with this presentation. We also um, require a personal essay and letter of recommendation. So that can be, you know, from a teacher, that can be from a counselor, um, whoever, you know, you think can best speak to why you would be a good fit here at Menlo. And then the personal essay will basically just help you describe and share why you think you'd be a good fit here um, at the college. You'll also submit your transcript. And then I have a personal application fee that I can also leave down in the chat. Last but not least, our deadlines. So if you apply before November 15th, you'll be in our early action pool and you will get an admissions decision in December. If you apply after November 15th, you'll get your admissions decision in March. All right, let me go ahead and stop. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Alexa. And last but not least, we will hear from Newman University. Last but awesomest. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Georgia Drews. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Newman University. And the first thing you're probably asking yourself is where the heck is Newman University? I've probably never heard of that place before. So allow me to enlighten you. Um, Newman is located right smack dab in the middle of the U.S. in the great Midwest. Um, we are in Wichita, Kansas, which happens to be the largest city in Kansas. Um, so while it is an urban metro area, not too overwhelming, not like one of the bigger cities in the U.S. Uh, it's also a really great place to live because the cost of living is fantastic. You get a lot of bang for your buck here. Um, and I always tell students, we're the air capital of the world. So appropriately, our mascot is the Jets. Um, and fun fact about Newman, I don't know if any of you are Star Wars fans, but Harrison Ford is an avid aviator. Uh, he has a lot of different types of aircrafts and he constantly brings them to Wichita to get them serviced. And while they're being serviced, he gets a rental car and he can be found all over Wichita, probably two to three times a year. There are always pop-up sightings on the news. So if you remember nothing else today, we're the Harrison Ford School. You can come to Wichita, catch Harrison Ford downtown, having lunch at the Doodah Diner, common occurrence. Um, so bring yourself down to the air capital, fantastic cost of living, especially if later in your college career you plan to live off campus. A little bit more about us, um, we are actually a Catholic college established in 1933 by a group of Catholic sisters called the Adorers of the Blood of Christ. We call them the ASC sisters for short. Um, we are also named after that little guy down there, St. John Henry Newman. 
Um, St. Newman was just canonized a saint by Pope Francis back in October of 2019, so he's still a little bit of a baby saint. If you guys like little charms for your backpacks, you should go check out tinysaints.com because they do have a St. Newman charm. I have one on my laptop bag. Um, we are named after him because he had some really cool ideas about what it meant to get a Catholic college education, and one of those ideas was for us to be very interdisciplinary, regardless of the degree that you were coming here to get. Uh, he was also a convert to the Catholic faith. He taught at Oxford University, and he was known in his lifetime for really spiritually catering to students that were Catholic and non-Catholic alike. Uh, and I think that's a really good thing because even though we're a traditional Roman Catholic university and we're right next door to a convent, only about 30 to 40% of our students on average self-identify as Catholic. Um, so we have students from a lot of different faith backgrounds, a lot of commuters from around the city of Wichita, um, and we have a thriving campus ministry office and chapel that serves all students on campus. Uh, we also have a really great relationship with the Catholic Diocese of Wichita in that all of the seminarians studying to be priests actually get their first four-year degree from Newman University before being assigned to an official seminary college by the bishop pictured here in our chapel. Um, you may have also heard um, some stories here nationally about Father Emil Capon's remains being turned home to Wichita um, after being found. Uh, Father Capon is currently being considered for sainthood by the Catholic Church, and he was ordained in this chapel right here. So fun fact. Um, this is our campus ministry team, including Father Adam Grellinger, who actually graduated from Newman University with a degree in IT before deciding to be a priest. Uh, here's all of our seminarians who live at the House of Formation off campus and attend school at Newman University. Um, so Newman is a liberal arts school. We have a wide variety of different things you could possibly study. Um, this is about 40 plus different areas of study. Uh, we're probably most known for the sciences and healthcare related fields. Uh, we have a lot of students that study biology and chemistry and go into these pre-professional fields. But we also have things like nursing, rad tech, respiratory care, OTA, and sonography. Uh, we have several offerings in our business program, uh, and we were originally formed as a school of education, so secondary, elementary, and early childhood options. Uh, and the reason we're probably most known for our sciences is because we send a lot of people to med school and other professional programs. Uh, we have a state-of-the-art science center that opened in 2017 that does boast a human anatomy lab with about eight to 10 cadavers for human dissection each year. And we do share that lab with the KU School of Medicine that's in town. Uh, we are NCAA Division II. We have been for about 13 years now, and we compete in the MIAA conference against a lot of schools in Kansas and surrounding states. Uh, we have 14 varsity teams and a handful of club sports. Uh, we are the only private Division II college in Kansas. We are also the only school in Kansas to have a men's and women's triathlon program. I, for one, came to Newman for the awesome bowling team. And yes, we go to nationals every year. Um, a few things, you know, we're a private school. Affordability tends to be a, um, a concern for a lot of people. Uh, students who graduate from Newman typically leave us with about 20% less college loan debt than the national average. We're also really good at getting people employed in their field of study. I am not one of those people, but um, a lot of people. Uh, these are our first time student scholarships, our applications online, it's free, there's no essay, and we are test optional, so you need only a 2.25 GPA or a 21 on your ACT to be automatically accepted, and we'll award you based on whichever one gives you a higher scholarship on the scale. Uh, student scholarships are between ten dollars to $16,000 per year for four years and are renewable as long as you maintain at least a 2.0 GPA. Um, if you are graduating from a Catholic high school, which is most of you on this call, um, you get are guaranteed a minimum $14,000 per year just for graduating from a Catholic high school. Uh, we also have some other opportunities such as the full tuition scholarship, the community leader one, art, music, honors, and some others. So follow us on social media and thanks for hanging out with us today. Thanks so much, Georgia. Um, if everyone can, all our presenters can turn on their cameras. I do have some questions for you all to answer for our students um, and their parents. Um, you guys are gonna answer in the same order in which you presented. And the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college process? Okay, so uh, for TUJ, the advice is, you know, there's so many schools you will probably be looking at, uh, and every school has a different application process in some way. I remember when people tell me every situation is different, I always say, I don't understand, that doesn't help me, uh, but please note that it's true, it's, a, it's true. So the, my advice is to keep a journal 
uh, personal journal where you can take note of what each school requires that will help you keep track of everything. I would say don't get caught up in the rankings. I know that's really easy to do, um, but rankings are really numbers. There is a best fit college for you out there. Um, you just have to find it. So keep an open mind and know that every college is going to be able to offer for you something um, that's going to be a good fit for you if that is a good college for you. Um, so really focus on, you know, what can you do with the universities that you're applying to and don't just look at the numbers. Yeah, great advice. And I would, um, my, I guess my advice would be to um, just make the college search your own certainly use your resources like us, admissions counselors, your high school um, guidance counselors and college and career counselors, your parents and, and family and friends, um, but make sure it's a, like Molly said, a, a right fit for you. Absolutely, that's all great advice. I definitely agree with. Um, I would also say through particularly the application process, um, I would encourage you to advocate for yourself through this process, particularly at universities like Cal Lutheran who do holistic review methods. Um, it's important for us to be able to understand your full context. So if you had a semester that was like really rough or maybe a class that was really tough on you, we won't know why unless you advocate for yourself and give us that context. I know in the common application, there's a section called additional information where you can Put that and say, hey, just so you know, I had a learning disability I didn't know about until my sophomore, junior year, or I had a teacher quit halfway through the year and it made it really hard, or we had family stuff going on, whatever it may be, that's important, um, at least at Cal and most likely to your admission counselors elsewhere as well, to have that context to understand who you are as a student as a whole. Um, don't get tripping just what's on paper is the only thing that you're able to provide us. Advocate for yourself through the process as well. Definitely echoing what Amanda said, don't be afraid to ask for help too. All of us here, you know, it's our job to help students out navigating, you know, the entire college experience. So don't be afraid to ask for help. If you have the opportunity to visit a campus, you know, don't be afraid to visit a campus, even if it's, you know, a place you're not necessarily, you know, thinking about. That can give you an idea of if you are thinking about, you know, going to a big school versus a small school, you know, there's there's value in going to visit any college campus, even if you aren't sure necessarily if it's on your list. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of going to say that, so I'm going to pivot here, pivot. Um, I would say look at a lot of different schools, but also, you know, I talk to a lot of students on visits who don't really know what questions to ask. And, you know, it's nice to kind of explore and go on tours and things like that, but it's also good to be able to envision yourself as a student there and kind of be checking some things off of your list, uh, but you won't be checking things off if you don't have a list. So consider um, sitting down. I know when my husband and I were touring, looking for houses to buy, um, we had a list and it was the must haves wish list items that yeah it would be good if they had it but it's not necessary and then like the deal breakers like the college has this it's like a no-go we're crossing them off the list so think about those things your list may not be very big because you're just starting out but you can kind of add things and subtract things from it as you go on those visits and see what's available to you that's all really great advice uh, my next question for you all is what is just one thing you would like students to remember about your school for us, we're in Japan, period. <laughs> we're an American university. It's one of the very few places in Japan where you can earn an American degree uh, in Tokyo. Thank you. I would say the Arizona Tuition Award, when you apply to Arizona, you're automatically applying for that merit scholarship. The higher your GPA, the higher that scholarship is going to be. Um, and depending on what you qualify for, it might end up being even cheaper than your local um, state schools. Again, at Iowa State University, I would say um, one thing I would want you to remember is just the opportunities that are available to undergraduate students and form of research and hands-on hands -on experiential learning. At Cal Eastern in particular, I think it's really easy for our students to know and be known. Um, we are a smaller institution. We're ranked one of the friendliest campuses. So if you come on campus, even to visit on a tour, um, you'll see that friendliness and the joy that just kind of is there from our students. 
And I think that's really special. It's something that if you're able to come on campus, you'll feel, I hear students say it all the time. Um, and hopefully it's something that you might be interested in experiencing during your college years. I would have to say um, our location. So if you're interested in studying business, you know, we're located by so many great places to complete your internship at a lot of great real life work experience before you even graduate. Um, so if you are interested in learning more about business and want to take advantage of some awesome internship opportunities, that's what I want you to remember about Menlo. Well, since I'm not in a specifically Catholic college fair and I am the Catholic college, I will say this, continue your Catholic education. Um, so remember that we're the Catholic college. We're one of three Catholic options in Kansas, um, super affordable. Um, I, I really enjoyed, I went to a Catholic high school and really enjoyed um, continuing my education here. And I was that kid who went to Catholic college and was like, I don't need to take any more theology classes. I've had this for 12 years, I'm good. And now I have a master's in it. So that could be you, I don't know. Um, come here, continue your faith, take those classes, be involved in campus ministry. You won't regret it. Thank you all so much. I wish I could visit all of your schools and learn more myself. Um, and thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. When you do close this window, there'll be a link with a really quick five question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, every session, including this session, will has been recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash archbishop dash midi. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, college representatives, for the great information and have a great evening, everybody.